Oui, oui. Uh, oui, oui. Yeah, see, the magazine was launched in 1994 as the Voice of Montreal, Montreal as, uh, with a wel Quebec welfare grant. The intention of the founders was to provide work and the community service. When the editors later sought to dissolve the commitments with the original publisher, Alex Laurent, they brought him out and changed the name to Vice in 1996. Tabernacle. Uh, Richard Sovelinski, a Canadian software millionaire, acquired the magazine and relocated the operation in New York City in the late 1990s. Following the relocation, the magazine quickly developed a reputation for provocative and politically incorrect content. Yeah. And customers could purchase fashion items that were advertised in the magazine. However, due to the end of the dot-com bubble, the three founders eventually regained ownership of the Vice brand, followed by the closure of the stores. Gavin McGinnis left in 2008. Um, and then at the commencement of 2012, an article in Forbes magazine referred to the Vice as Vice Media. Vice acquired a fashion magazine ID in December 2012. And by February 2013, Vice, has produced, Vice produced 24 global editions of the magazine. I wonder if I have in, uh, some of the older ones that I used to, I used to pick them up for free. Um, but yeah. They had a fun little YouTube page that I'm sure many of you have seen. I'm sure you've watched uh, many of the uh, YouTube videos, like their OG documentaries, travel guides, do's and don'ts, things of that nature. Um, one of the funniest, like, we used to have a meme at the Young Turks office, me and uh, this other producer. Uh, we would just, like, yell out, article titles that were fucking insane and then go voice which uh ironically uh in, in a in a situation where like um they like we would just be like we got uh i don't know we got hipsters in in ghana to dumpster dive for crocodile voice like that sort of shit you know what i mean um and it used to be like a, a, a joke that we, yeah, ketamine horse traders, like that kind of shit. Exactly. Um, and then Bill Hader did that joke, uh, actually, uh, the, the El Chingon. You know what I mean? Uh, that was awesome. Drones, I think. The documentary now parody is still one of the greatest, in my opinion. The world is nuts. No one knows what's going to happen next. <laughs> but whatever goes down, we'll be there, keeping a close eye on all the madness. This is the world of drones. This is a Vice parody from IFC. It was perfect. Hi, I'm Jameson Friend. We're here in the drones offices in Brooklyn, New York, where our staff is working hard to bring you the real news of today's world. For this week's story, we go to Juarez, Mexico, where the war on drugs has turned this once beautiful city into the deadliest place on earth. Wait, I want to watch the rest of it. El Chingon! I like that Vice promoted it too. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, yeah, the hunt for El Chingon. Documentary now. Murder. Kidnappings. Murder. A broken system. Mexicans. 
Ciudad Juarez. It's the city most closely associated with Mexican drugs. <laughs> It's so good. It's the, this is the, this was so fucking good, dude. Mexicans. Of course. To have this once beautiful city become the drug capital of the world. Time for a little geography lesson. Mexico is directly south of America, which means it shares a border with the United States. And what goes over that border? Drugs. Is that sinking in yet, America? This is happening in your backyard. In Juarez, the drug game is headed by the Salvez Cartel, which is run by this man, El Chigon. He's killed thousands and made millions, but he left a big mess in the process. We decided to hit the streets and ask the locals what they could tell us about this modern-day Mexican Scarface. Have you guys seen El Chigon? El Chigon? I think it's dangerous to have a camera. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, whatever, bro. Is vato maricones. Their fans. Hey, thanks, man. Unfortunately for us, most were too paralyzed by fear to speak up. She's clearly afraid of something, man. Tell us your story. Are you afraid? She might be asleep. Don't she go? Finally, through social media. We met someone brave enough to talk. Buenas tardes. Hey, hi. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Hey. Manuel Bautista has lived in Juarez his whole life. Last year, his son, Felipe, was kidnapped by the cartel. Yeah. Okay. He invited us into his humble hacienda to tell us a tale. We're going into uh, his home right now. Hacienda. And just a warning, the poverty you're about to see may be disturbing to your first world sensibilities. <laughs> first generation PlayStation. <laughs> Look at that. Whoa. The dog's a chicken. <laughs> to an idea of the side. It just ripped them so well. I mean, this is the vibe overall of a, of a Vice documentary. Like, it's always like some fucking Brooklyn hipster that they send to some, like, war-torn part of the country. And then uh, they're like, wow, it's crazy. That like greatly, uh, you know, flub the investigation part, and often will like hyper focus on like silly sensationalist parts. I can't remember if this was actually from the drones like parody, or if it actually was something that happened in the real world. Wasn't there a conversation? Wasn't there literally a conversation where like they were shitting on CNN? And it's like investigative reporting. And the guy was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Of course we're in like all of those countries that you're talking about. Like, and then, and then the vice guys were like, uh, well, we've never seen them. <laughs> we've never seen your videos. Fuck. What was it? God damn it. Was it was it actually from this or was it in was it, that was in a real documentary I think it was that was a real thing that happened guys of everything just so you can get the scale I want to show you guys that this is how far my arms extend in a hallway in a home where someone is raising their family it's like a family portrait like look how sad this is wow this is how people live you know they make do with what they can this kid's probably a yeah oh here 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 it is here it is page one David Carr confronts Vice. Hi. This is David Carr from the New York Times. Nice you, don't keep saying I'm from the New York Times. That right. sucks. Just, right. It's me. David, it's nice to meet you from the I do. Very nice Hi. to meet you. It's me. How are you? We wanted to get everyone together to do a company wide update. The media landscape is changing in really dramatic ways in just six months. So print um, as an as a industry and a medium continues to nosedive. Publications like Newsweek and Times. Their mistake was literally not running three-minute ads at the top of the hour, which is what I do, and that's why uh, Undefeated at the top of the fucking hour where we get, uh, you know, a three-minute ad break. But, of course, if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. You can also get gifted a sub if you're lucky. Vice! Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. If they had done that, 
they probably would be around today and not be fucking bankrupt. Oh, wait, also, you know, maybe not have a, such an expansive, insane, massive, uh, multi-million dollar uh, operation. Um, here's the three-minute outbreak now. Ain't your stuff subsidized at least, unlike Vice? Wait, what do you mean? Subsidized by who? Nestor Perez, thank you for the eight, uh, five get the subs. Extra summons, thank you for the five get the subs as well. Are going down fast. We like to. Okay, we'll watch this after. Let's drug keep going. Dealer now. Look at him, you can tell. Like he's a drug dealer now. He was a man who had next to nothing, but the real tragedy was not what he I'm owned, pee, I'll be back. but what he had lost. One day, llegaron dos hombres al rancho. Y me dijeron que querían tomar posesión de nuestra tierra. Es que para esconder sus drogas y yo les dije que no. No, los niños están ahí. Pero es que Felipe, no sé si está muerto o no. ¿Qué dice? No estoy seguro. Solo mira el suelo. No, pero mira a él. Ustedes también tienen gente que se las ha llevado. Sí, yeah, sí, yeah, no, we've, we've lost friends too, you know, um, Rhea and, and Rick and, um, yeah, and uh, Sam, a lot of people to uh, the urban farming boom. They left Brooklyn and went to Detroit. We're happy to hear your story and we're getting your story out there. And uh, it's all drug money and everything's built on drug money. And, you know, your clothes are drug money and this no. house is built on Nosotros drug no money. Hacemos drogas, se lo juro. Nosotros no we hacemos all wanted answers. And we wanted answers too about El Chingon. The comes in and pays for drugs. <laughs> Is that? Son los hombres del chingón. Me han de haber escuchado que estaba hablando con ustedes. Turn the light off. Turn the light off. All right. So some guys uh, who work for El Chingón are outside. We're gonna talk to them, relate, get them to relax, and then maybe get some info out of them. Let's see how it goes. What's going on, fellas? How's it going? Well, that didn't work. Ha <laughs> ha! They died. So Kyle and John were dead. Luckily for us, they'd already recorded their voiceovers. But we still wanted to get to the bottom of this whole Elching Gone stuff, so we brought in two more reporters who'd been off on other assignments. Trevor Kenny, who was in Alabama making omelets with a racist sorority. <laughs> Whoa! That was not cool. And Bryce Bowen, who was in the Middle East where he was introducing the Syrian rebel forces to Mario Kart. You're just driving. You're just driving. <laughs> what time did that end? We put Bryce and Trevor on the next flight to Juarez to pick up where their brothers in arms had left off. Back to the main streets. Here at Drones, we had a sneaking suspicion that John and Kyle were killed off because they were asking too many questions about the infamous drug lord, El Chingon. But that wasn't gonna stop us from tracking down the man behind the legend. We're gonna go meet this New York Times reporter and uh, see what she knows about El Chingon, trade some secrets, drones. Yeah, we've been uh, doing some research on El Chingon and it turns out that he's like super oppressive to the people. I don't know, like Skeletor, or Darth yeah, Vader or yeah, something. Yeah, like an evil presence. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. You'd think that the locals would be like really against him, but people here, they really they really love him. I mean, he's kind right. of a Robin Hood type figure to them. He provides right. for them in a way that their own government cannot. But they, that's what you heard, right? No, that's what I know. I've been doing research on it. The cartel has a really huge <laughs> stronghold on this whole town. I mean, they... Like, as much as, like, New York Times is... Uh, Foreign coverage a lot of times is like State Department cut out, uh, State, State Department carve outs. There is a very real element to like their news coverage versus like the way sometimes Vice and other sensationalist forms of media would do news coverage. Fun festivals, they have a lot of bars, they have dangerous. What is it? Scary, What's the name of the places? Uh, the Caballo del Oro. Hacienda right. Corona. So they're like touristy kind of places? No, these are places you do not want to go ever. 
You should go there. No, no, no. You guys do not want to go to that place. It is one of the most dangerous places. The cops don't want to go there. To you. To, to you. everybody. But you what guys. if we, sp well, I don't speak Spanish. Do you speak Spanish? Well, exactly. You guys, or Bokito. No, I mean, the army won't go there. It's, the seriously, army in every guys. country is paid off. I've been everywhere. No, I've done stuff too, you know. I went to Ukraine, they buried me up to my neck, and dudes took turns hitting me in the head with a golf club. And I was <laughs> there. I covered fist boxing in China. You know, that's where those like, just like fist fighting, no, no boxing gloves, just a melee of, of, of men. You know, a group just like throwing punches and that's their sport. And I was there to cover it. I got bruised, but. I was embedded in Tunisia. They put me in a tent and they fattened me up and then they just to, like try to marry me off to Why? like one of the men. I got a kick ass story out of it. Wow. I will go to that link, wow. okay? Yeah. Because we have the balls to go in there and do it. Okay. Like, this is extreme. Oh, you understand you might die. No, that's what someone told the guys before us. Yeah. And they're dead, and that's why we're here, but... I don't know, guys. If you're gonna go, can I give you a name of a good fixer? We already got somebody, and he's pretty sweet. All right. Good luck to you. Our fixer is none other than our good friend, Streetwise rapper, Ty Dollar Sign. Yeah, I'm <laughs> Oh. Rolling with Ty gives you immediate cred, and as a bonus, it was his first time in Mexico. That kind of a deer wolf uh, vibe to it, right? Ah. Well, the music was a bit of a boner, so to make things interesting, we asked Ty to get up on stage for an all-out, no-holds-barred rap battle. Rap battle against who? Them or you? Yeah, yeah, go up. I think you should go check it out. Yeah, I'm gonna go up there, all right. I think he's getting his drink. I think he left. Do you want to do a battle? No! It was time to hit the dance floor. And thanks to our good buddies in the third world fashion scene, we were already rocking the freshest new styles. These are pointy boots. They're supposedly hugely popular here. <laughs> we wore them to mix in with the locals, but um, it doesn't look like anyone else is really uh, wearing them. We look like a couple of chooches. As the night went on and we looked around the club a little more, we made an incredible discovery. El Chigon, this is the guy we're looking for. There were pictures of El Chigon everywhere. It turns out that people of Juarez actually love El Chigon. He's kind of a Robin Hood figure to them, a hero who provides for them in ways their government can't. Even the words to the song seem to... I love that he just like repeated what the New York Times Journal said there. This. So this band, what they're singing about, they're saying that this Chingon is a great guy and he's really cool and he can drink six to eight beers a night and never get a hangover. Spending a night in dangerous territory had been risky, but by doing so, we had won the trust of the locals. And now that trust <laughs> was about to pay off. All right, look, we met these guys inside. They're cops. They have some information on El Chigon. They're gonna tell it to us, but we can't bring the camera in the car, okay? But we've got our microphones on, so listen in, okay? Yeah. Check. <laughs> Trevor and Bryce's tragic end was confirmed in a letter from Ty Dalla Sign. Dear drones, I think they melted your friends. And then these were delivered to the office. Hey, 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 don't. Open that. Let's keep these, put them in the lounge, throw a couple coffee table books on them. Mm. All right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> First John and Kyle, now Trevor and Bryce. Clearly, someone in Mexico was sending us a message. But our work in Juarez was far from over. So we sent in two of our very best reporters, Lars Clegg, who was up in the frozen north investigating Mongolian horse pimps. Hey, so uh, how much is the horse? <laughs> and Denver MacGyver, who was deep in the Amazon for a little taste of an ancient tradition known as the burn circle. Oh, really? And this time? We weren't messing around. 
We were ready to turn Juarez upside down to find El Chigon. El Chigon! Chigon, where are you? El Chigon, where are you? But as it turns out, tracking down the most wanted man in Mexico wasn't as easy as you might think. Sabes o conoces un hombre que se llame El Chigon? <laughs> Luckily, we got hooked up with a local professor who had some sweet insider information. Because knowledge is power. Thanks for having us. Hi, Thank how you. are you? We're drones. Hope you don't mind our camera guy. It's Chris. Everybody knows El Chingon lives somewhere in the foothills of Salves. That is why it's called the Salves Cartel. Oh, Salves Cartel. OK. You, you reported you knew that already, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. No, the yeah, foothills. We yeah, we. Salves. You know, Salves yeah. and the foothills. Let's go. So if we just get. A, no, 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 wait. Promise me, do not go there. Even the police do not go to Salves. Because? Because if you go there, you will die. These guys don't play around. But wait they a minute. Especially with a camera, they won't even ask any questions. You but, will be killed. But that's the key. We do ask questions. OK, so you shouldn't go there then. Foothills and Salves. All right. Promise me you will not go there. We promise we won't go. <laughs> We're walking for a couple hours. Should be pretty close to El Chigon's house. There's no place to really walk. There's a lot of weeds. Weeds are a lot thicker than you'd think, a lot stronger. And uh, we're the only ones out here. New York Times isn't doing this. Uh, I think New York Times did do a piece out here. They did? Yeah. <laughs> well, cut that out. Whoa. Oh, wow. So how do we find El Chigon? Same way they found Bin Laden. We looked for the biggest house and knocked on the front door. <laughs> it's gotta be the house. Oh, there's a dude. Hey, um, hi, we're from Drones. Uh, you have El Chigon. Oh, 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 show called drones um with a z put the camera put the camera how did you find me um we were just we, walking we just, around we saw the house we wanted to find you kind of what we do is uh we kind of find the craziest people and we kind of just wanted an interview with you and um this is our cameraman uh this is chris we're, we're, we're yeah we're fine we're cool and, and we just want to yeah we just want to get to, to get to get know the real you <sighs> that's a thing that you are open, and you and your friend, your friends could be in it. All you guys can be in the. Interview, the we, can interview we, we can interview each and one every one of you guys. You guys could be on uh, the the internet. Okay. What's up? Okay. Okay. Hey. Okay. My everything's working. Camera's good. Holy shit! All right. Thank you, and thank you, man. Thanks, that was, all right. We suddenly had unprecedented access into the life of the world's most dangerous drug trafficker. At first, he was invigorating. Ah! Oh my God, I've never done this much coke in my life. You said, what about Beth's barbecue? Oh yeah, I forgot. Right? That. Chris, you gotta get on this. Here, I'll hold the camera. Hit that shit, bro! But as soon as we began walking in El Chigon's shoes, a strange logic emerged. Woo! Hey man, that's some fast with furious man. And as we unraveled the enigma, we learned so much about the real El Chigon. Like his middle name, is Ignacio, which shortens to Nacho. It's pretty rad. <laughs> Most importantly, we discovered that, deep down, this powerful kingpin is really just a fun dude is into cool stuff. Like smoothies. Oh. A total partier with suave taste and a generous heart. <laughs> We danced with his daughters, hung with his compadres, and fiested Mexican gangster style. Yeah! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Dude, are you okay? You okay? 
americano! Things are going pretty good. Uh, we still haven't gotten that interview yet. I think El is going to sit down with us pretty soon. It's going to be pretty great. But I mean, Juarez isn't that bad. You have to speak up for the mic. I learned that from Chris. Chris, you're an asshole, man. You're an animal, Chris. Drones. 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 We finally built up enough trust to sit down for our long-awaited interview with the man himself, El Gigone. Thank you so much for making us feel so welcome. It's been an unbelievable experience. So um, I guess uh, we could start doing this interview. So how do you decide who uh, is gonna be like a guard for you? It all happened so fast. One of the deadliest raids in the history of the war on drugs. Afterwards, the cops searched the property, smoked out the survivors, but El Chigon was nowhere to be found. He was the stuff of legend, like an epic verse from one of their shitty polka songs. What, what do I say? I mean, I have been embedded with the federal police for an entire year, and this is the biggest operation they've ever conducted. And apparently you guys are right in the middle of it. So that is just, that is, wow. All the cocaine's still in there. What are you talking about? All the cocaine's still in there. Who cares? You can't just leave it in there. Come, Come on. on. <laughs> we're lucky. What do you mean we're lucky? Where are we gonna go? We're gonna, gonna arrest him. We'll die. That's nuts. Drowns. Nice work, boys. We're all really stoked about your next piece on the vodka dicking. You put your dick in some vodka and get super wasted on another can't miss episode of drones. Oh yeah, that's good beef. Kobe beef straight from Tokyo. I mean, that was, in my opinion, one of the greatest uh, examples of, of Vice. I like this is Kobe beef from Tokyo. Yeah, I mean, this is the type of shit that they would do all the time. Yeah, gun merchants, the Vice travel, the Vice guide to travel, the gun markets of Pakistan at, uh, with Suresh Alvi, one of the OGs. We're here in Lahore, Pakistan, in the old city. I'm here visiting family. It's been about three years since I was in the country, and in that time, the country has gone through insane amounts of change. It's really full of deep contradictions. On the one hand, you've got this progressive set of the... I mean, it's like identical. You know what I mean? They're organizing fashion weeks and they're partying. And you've got this liberal media explosion happening in this country. And they're operating uncensored by the government. On the other side, you've got the Taliban. They've been infiltrating the entire country, attacking police stations and government buildings in a recent wave of violence. It's now uh -oh. escalated into a full-fledged battle with the Pakistani army fighting the Taliban in the tribal areas near the- I'm worried that they, because they, so, they used to show some crazy shit. So this is a 2011 documentary, so I, I don't want to watch the whole thing. Also, this is the real vice. This is not a documentary. I mean, uh, this is not a mockumentary. This is a documentary. Near the Afghan border. We traveled to this area three years ago when we wanted to visit a massive illegal arms market believed to be a source of weapons for the Taliban. It's been called the most dangerous place in the world and is now basically closed to outsiders and journalists. So I asked my mom to call her buddy. He was the chief secretary of the Northwest Frontier Province of Pakistan. And with his help, we got our own private militia and they made sure we wouldn't get kidnapped or killed. If everybody come to my side, I will definitely kill him. <laughs> Name, who's our host, is part of the Afridi tribe. 
He was born and raised there and now works as a protocol officer for the government. He put it together for us. He got us through, dealt with a huge amount of bureaucracy, and got the militia to cover us as we went through the market. Is this loaded? Yes, this is loaded, <laughs> but they, they locked. They locked it. They, Where's the lock? This is the gateway of Haver Pass, and from here the Haver Pass is started. It's the most historic pass in the history of the world. The Aryans came through, the Mongols came through, the British Army came through and got destroyed. Special place. Special place for special people. Oh, thanks, buddy. This is the house of Mr. Yuba Fridi. He was in jail on the narcotics offense in USA. Now he is acquit and now he is living here freely. He's the founder of the heroin trade. The, not the trade, the basically the idea. The concept. The concept. Of what? Of, uh, of heroin. I'll lose my hat, man. It's my father's hat. <laughs> I will try my best. It's a very special Italian hat. I will try hat. my best. Oh, God. No! After Khyber, we went into Dara. That's... Ah! Dude, it's the same. It's the same. It's the same. It's the same. Why same, though? I mean, it's the same video. Of what we just watched. Heroin is a synthetic drug that was invented in the late 1800s. Oh, yeah, yeah. Are you sure this is not a mockumentary? No. I mean, this is also not really a documentary either. He's just like a dude doing crazy shit. Where the arms market is. So when you were explaining to the officials what we wanted to do, yeah. the old man started laughing when you said we wanted to shoot guns and maybe buy some guns. Yeah. I think he liked that idea. He liked, he liked, he liked he, that idea. He, he was laughed. Yeah, he was he, laughed. He was laughed. Yeah. People of this area believe many sons and a lot of guns. This is the philosophy of the Dara peoples. the largest illegal arms market in the world. There's another one in Pakistan, it's not quite as big. And the story is that during the 80s, the Soviet-Afghan war was happening. All the scrap metal from all the broken down tanks and guns that they would find, they would bring it back over and then replicate firearms. First they will show you how the gun is making, how the bullet is making. Then they show you the shooting area. So in the whole town, they make a thousand guns a day here. And they've been doing that for 70 years. That's a lot of guns. So this guy is making nine millimeter pistols with his bare hands. The guy who's making it um, is, is deaf. Uh, it's a Mauser, but it says made as China by Norinko. This is the, 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 the cartridge. He has no tongue. 1,050 rupees price. Bro! Bro! This guy's deaf. He has no tongue. <laughs> 3,050 rupees. Right. We're hearing lots of guns Damn, being shot steal. around us. And they're just checking to make sure that the guns work. Uh, and they're doing it with live ammo. What I'm wondering is, they shoot it up in the air. <laughs> Where do the bullets fall? This one is one of the big and popular shops in this gun market. Time to go gun shopping. Here's an Italian machine. This is like a Kalashnikov? Kalakov. It says, it's a muzzle light. I think you could do some damage to this.
Bro, that, this is sick. The original Hyber rifle. So in 1857, the British gave yeah. the Afghanis 10,000 of these. I don't even know where to cut this thing. Where do you put the bullet in? It's got oh, you put it in a musket. A musket, right, you put it in. Nazi gun. German. Nazi. German. Nazi. World War II. Nazi gun. Pure evil in my hand. What? That's so funny. It's just a Luger, dude. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? He held it. It was like pure evil in my hand. Isn't that literally still used in competitive shooters because of its accuracy as a handgun? Oh, fuck. <laughs> it's like, my man goes, my man goes to the fucking shooting range. He's like, Luger. Pure evil in my hand. <laughs> uh, he said it like the gun itself is a Nazi. So, now we are going to the shooting area. Yes, let's go. Bullet. But so, fell. yeah. Oh so we <laughs> Vice in the chat said, boss is so poetic. <laughs> oh, brother, I hope you don't get fired. All jokes aside, you're doing a great job. We're wondering where they yeah, fall. They, they, they don't fall <laughs> far from us. Uh, uh, I'm going to keep it. Okay, let's keep it. You got to be kidding. This is the shooting area? We just had lunch downstairs. Yes. All right, let's do this. What? I'm shooting the enemies in the hills. I've never done this before. It's a Kalashnikov. Uh, and I'm kind of nervous. I see my target. I got him. Yeah. He does not. He is. My man is not shooting at a target. Yeah. <laughs> America thought that by sending in troops to Afghanistan and the Pakistani army into the tribal areas, they'd be able to squash the Taliban uprising. They were wrong. The people we saw live in caves. They work in insane conditions. They have no tongues, and they make guns with their bare hands. <laughs> He said the people we saw had no tongues, bro. That. That turned into a $5.7 billion valuation. Shouts out to Rupert Murdoch for that one. Okay. This motherfucker saw one dude who didn't have a tongue, which we don't even know if that was the case or not. And basically it was like... They have these people out here. They have no tongues. They live in caves and they build guns by hand. We're done. We succeeded in our mission. We came to Dara and we bought guns. We shot them. We saw it all, how it all happens. <laughs> if you come here, you got to make sure you look the part and you got to have a guy like name to make it all happen. Shukriya. And one last thing. Pakistan's in the bad. <laughs> government basically shut it down. They shut it down to outsiders and journalists because the Pakistani army was in there fighting the Taliban. And right now, between the Pakistani army and the U.S. troops on the border, the Taliban inside the tribal areas, it's essentially a powder keg that's ready to blow. A military expert that we know, he described the situation as the wickedest problem you could possibly imagine. Dude, I love that. I love that. Like the way he's, this is literally funnier than the fucking parody. Okay. It's, it's, it's funnier than like the actual fucking parody that they made.
the original one. <laughs> the army shut them down and they couldn't say a word. Want to guess why? Because they, they had no tongues. Dog, they had no tongues. I mean, North Korea was like their, their big one too. The Vice North Korea one. That was a huge one. Where the fuck is it? Wait, I just lost it. I literally... That was in uh that was 11 years ago in 2011. But like even that, I would consider the North Korea doc to be a new vice doc. I think that uh the the uh North Korea one is like still a relatively new one. Their OG ones were like crocodile, there was a drug that like people were using to um The Cannibal Warlords of Liberia is another one. Yeah, that one we can't watch, obviously. That, like, it just is is insane. Uh, there's, like, dicks in that, I'm pretty sure. That's why I was saying we can't watch these uh, on on stream. No, I, not the general, but naked. Wait, click by their most popular. There's a lot about YouTube. Yeah, I don't even know if I can show the thumbnails on their most popular ones. Oh, okay. I can show some of it. It's all sex, though. It's like making the world's first male sex doll slut ever. 84 million views. Porno boot camp, the training ground for amateur porn actors. Medically assisted sex. Uh, the biggest ass in Brazil. UK scariest debt collector. What the fuck? I've never seen this one before. What the fuck is this? Ten years ago, Sean Smith was an enforcer for one of the biggest crime families in Liverpool and embroiled in a war against a rival drug gang. Sean introduced urban terrorism to the British underworld. He sprayed up houses with machine guns, tortured people, and used homemade napalm to firebomb his enemies. Today, after a spell of five years in prison for firearms offenses, he's trying to transfer those skills to the legal economy while working as a debt collector in a northern English satellite town of Warrington. What? The Westminster's dog show on acid? Hey, my name's Braden, and I'm going to the Westminster Dog Show um, at Madison Square Garden on acid. This can't be real. It's so real. This is what Vice did. This was peak Vice. Are you kidding me? This is a, yeah, this is a classic. Dude, this shit was so dumb. I God, I watched so much of this shit. The Vice North Korea documentary was in 2008. I know this because it was on VBS and had the Vice Travel Guide intro card on the videos. It was definitely old Vice. Yeah, no, I was not talking about the Dennis Rodman one. Uh... This one is New Vice, I think, right? Vice went to North Korea a lot, but the original one is, I, I think this is the, this is not the original one. Bro, I always wondered if this was legal, like when people talk about using stu drugs, obviously it's protected under free speech, but when you're literally filming yourself taking an illicit drug, can't the cops smack you for that? I guess you could just say that it's like... This is the OG one, yeah. This is the OG one. Oh, yeah, I guess this... Oh, this is the same one. This is, the, this is that one. Never mind. Uh, they just re-uploaded it, I guess. They just re-uploaded it. As Vice News. The world's scariest drug crocodile was another banger. 
And then the other one was uh, the the drug that they use in like I forget it was a Latin American country where they like would you would take it and then they would like de- deplete your entire ATM. Uh, you know they would go to the ATM and deplete deplete your entire fucking bank account. What was it? What was the yeah? Was it Colombia? Burundunga? Galopamine? I think this is the one, right? Yeah, it is. This is the one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Checks out a strange and powerful drug called scolopamine, also known as the devil's breath. It's a substance so intense that it renders a person incapable of exercising free will. The first few days in the country were a harrowing montage of freaked out dealers and unimaginable horror stories of scolopamine. After meeting only a few people with first-hand experience, this story took a far darker turn than we could have ever imagined. Voice! Escopola es como un gramo de perico, la misma, la misma maricada porque tiene la misma densidad en peso y en presentación, si ¿sí me entiendes cómo es, pero tú con un gramo puedes matar hasta 10, 15 personas, matar, por eso es tan extremadamente delicado y no se consigue y, y la información, por ejemplo, que yo sí sé dónde se consigue porque yo sí sé, hijo de puta, si me dónde se consigue todo. Now, the borrachero tree, which, by the way, roughly translates to drunken binge tree, is indigenous to the northern Andean region. That includes Colombia and Ecuador, Venezuela. But the scopolamine is really only used by the criminal element here in Colombia. Que por aquí hay. Por aquí tiene que haber una. Yo miro si de pronto pillamos una. No dice que hay al lado de César hay una. Si dice al lado de César hay un árbol. Hay aquí es silvestre. So despite the insane homicide rates, the kidnapping, the narco trafficking, the civil unrest, and everything else going on in here in Colombia, we can't seem to find a Colombian who's more scared of anything than falling asleep under the borrachero tree. Dog, this is literally identical to drones. I'm so glad I showed you guys drones, and now I'm showing you this instead. Because this is like, oh God, OG Vice, man. Ah, oh, forced to be reckoned with. Fuck me. Holy shit. Such memories. $5.7 billion, dude. So far. Uh, I'm really into Colombia. I showed up, uh, beautiful women ordered me dinner, and it's fantastic. And they ordered a bottle of whiskey to the table. I might not go back. Espera, espera, la canto. Songo le dio a Ta na 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 na. There's a song with it. I don't know why, but no, no, no. It's been it's been around for a long time. So it's not it's not something that that is popularly done down here. Then no, that, anybody does that. No, really, no, not at all. No, no, we have cocaine. He's like, well, I'll do it. <laughs> He's like, it's gonna take this documentary needs to take a dark turn, which is why. I'm gonna take the dr- I'm gonna take the drug and drug myself. <laughs> <laughs> we have cocaine, we have grass, <laughs> we have wheat. <laughs> what? What? Burundanga? Why? Yeah. Everybody is yeah. aware. Like, yeah. Yeah. todo el mundo tiene cuidado. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like you can you cannot control it at all. You don't need it in a cup or no, with no, a no, drink just to smell it. To smell it. To Oof. smell it. Yeah, it's very strong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean, if the really robbers the, they use it for that is because they know that you are not you cannot react or a paper like I heard this guy that was th- this old lady came to him oh I don't know where this address is and this paper and he just and got yeah, it like this close and, like and he's on it yeah mm-hmm. so this guy and uh, this guy was like was really hospital. crazy he was like walking on the in the oh. hospital like really lost perfect drug like to do you, that you know because the person doesn't yeah. like like pass yeah. out i don't know if i believe a lot of these stories i'm just gonna say they're that. still conscious yeah. and they do everything 
that they tell you to do. Yeah. Do you know Do you know people that have been given burundanga? Do you have a cousin of a friend or a cousin? No, I have an uncle. Mm. An uncle? Yeah. You don't own mm. yeah, It's not a happy him? story, you know. No, I know. <laughs> but it's true. I mean, I doubt that they can, like, get you off of a whiff of paper, dog. They probably fucking put it in your goddamn... No, no, no. I know that they use scolopamine. I know that they use scolopamine in uh, doing crimes in Colombia. I just meant that they probably drug your drink or something. You know what I mean? Uh, 50,000 a year. Scolopamine can render a victim unconscious for 24 hours or more. In large doses, it can cause respiratory failure or death. Like, yeah, beside robbers, it's also allegedly involved in express kidnapping and sexual assault. Yeah, see, most commonly, the person has been poisoned by a robber who gave the victim scolopamine laced beverage in the hope that the victim would become unconscious or unable to effectively resist the robbery. Yeah. Scopolamine, not scolopamine. Sorry, scopolamine. Oh, Azan is scopolamine. Yeah, I'm on my mind. But um, he, he was a taxi cab driver, mm -hmm. and and they use this thing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know the whole story exactly, but um, but it was his last trip. He died. He died? Se llama Floripondio, su nombre científico es Datura, de ahí se saca la escopolamina, pero también se le dice borrachero y se le dice la planta del diablo aquí en Colombia. We're here at the Botanical Gardens on the outskirts of Bogota. We're going to go see if we can figure out what this plant actually looks like. Yeah, if the paper thing works, the CIA would be all over this. Exactly. Like, there's... As far as I know, there's no like, oh, you looked at a, you smelled a fucking piece of paper and all of a sudden you're like 24 hours, you're in a fucking captive state. I don't think that works. Uh, it, you know, it, there is definitely, it, it's definitely a bit embellished, right? Like they probably drug your, they probably lace your drink or something like that. It's probably the most common way to do it. I mean, it sells besides robbers is da, 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 allegedly uh, using express kidnapping and sexual assault. Um, Hospital clinic has found little scientific evidence to support this use and relies on the victim's stories to reach a conclusion. Although poisoning by scopolamine appears quite often in media as an aid for raping, kidnapping, and killing a robbery, the, side, the effects of this drug is the way that it's applied by criminals, transdermal injection, or playing cards or newspapers, are often exaggerated, especially skin exposure, as the dose that can be absorbed by skin is too low to have any effect. Bro, I might not know every little thing about drugs, but at least I know some things about drugs, okay? When motherfuckers tell you, oh, dude, skin contact is really, really effective in, like, destroying you, okay? No. There you go. I told you. Scopolamine transdermal patches, just like fentanyl, are must be used for hours to days. There are certain other aspects of the usage of sco scopolamine in crimes. Powdered scopolamine is used as devil's breath. It's portrayed as a method to brainwash or control people into being defrauded by their attackers. There's debate whether these claims are true. It is not verified if the powdered form is capable of inducing a suggestive state. The danger is real enough that in addition to the Overseas Security Advisory Council, the U.S. Department of State as well as the Government of Canada published travel advisories Warning travelers about the possibility of targeting criminals using devil's breath use, often use attractive young women they target men to believe are wealthy. Anyway. But yeah, it makes sense that like they dump it into your fucking drink and probably get you to do shit, but... Those right there are the flowers that we've heard a lot about. 
You can kind of put those in a tea and you'll hallucinate. You can also take the root down there, put that in a tea and again, you'll hallucinate. And then there's the cacao, which kind of looks like a, the, the mini coconut of sorts that has the seeds inside. Me comí pepino y medio. Duré 17 días viajando con otro parcero. Mi parcero se quedó en el viaje. El mano hoy en día anda así en la calle. Like, where'd they find this guy, bro? They, they're like interviewing a crackhead for this. You know what I mean? Like, God, I fucking love Old Vice so much. Yo no sé en qué viaje, cuál, en qué viaje pasar y quedaría el man. Un choker, hijo de puta, tú te quedas en el viaje. El man. Pero el man anda por la calle así. El man mira detrás de la mano. El man no anda así. El man anda ¿Quién sabe en qué viaje se quedaría el marica, güey? Pero loquísimo, si analiza la acción, el man, como una cortina. Actually, just crack the thing right there, and then this is where the seeds are. I mean, that's where everything comes from, right? That's what they use to actually make the scopolamine. You're in business. The He's going to eat it. Dangerous drug in Colombia and arguably the world. El polvo lo sacan del cacao sabanero, que es el fruto. Pero entonces el polvo tiene un proceso químico, ¿sí me entiendes cómo es? O sea, el polvo, no, o sea, para pulverizarlo, convertirlo en blanco y volverlo una pastilla o, o algo así. Se necesita, un químico, Pussy. se necesita un químico. Es como, por ejemplo, usar éter para, bajar, para rebajar el perico, para, etc. Entonces eso, eso ya es completamente químico. The coca, at the end of the day, I mean, with its obvious pitfalls and dangers, is recreational. Yeah. Whereas there's nothing at all recreational about what can be made with this. It's a distinctly criminal element. Dog. Cocaine has no medical usage. Scopolamine does. What is he saying? Like, you're wrong, Hassan? Cocaine does? Medical cocaine? I guess cocaine does have medical usage. I'm wrong. I was thinking of fucking, like, Freud. I was thinking of I, my bad. Yes, there's liquid cocaine. Uh, there's there's medical cocaine. I'm sorry. You're right. It does have medical 